Yo, this is the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. This is Michael Rappaport. Um, dedicating this episode of the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast to Joey Boots from Howard Stern Show Fame. I got a chance to meet him. Good dude, funny dude, sweet dude. Um, really, really supportive of, of the show. He was just at the Irving Plaza live show. You can hear his voice on it. He uh he gave G. Moody the 2016 Podcast Co-Host of the Year Award on stage. Got to hang out with him all day. That was December 10th. Um, you know, and he passed away. Uh, he's a good dude, man. Um, obviously, I met him through the Stern Show and Stern Show friends and stuff like that. And um, <clears throat> he's just a good dude. Nice dude, funny dude, great sense of humor. Um, so I wanted to just make sure, you know, we're dedicating this entire episode to Joey Boots Shout out to High Pitch Eric, uh, Joey Boots family, because, you know, he was a whack packer and looked at as a whack packer, but he's a regular dude, um, you know, with struggles, a heart, and, um, you know, a great sense of humor. So, CIM Rap Poor Stereo Podcast, um, RIP to our friend, a lot of people's friends, and uh, I know he had a lot of fans. Rest easy, my man. Okay. Yes, 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 y'all. Yes, yes, y'all. This is the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. You know what it is. I, th- I think you do know what it is. Uh, I think you're very, very well aware of what it is. My name is the Gringo Mandingo, a.k.a. Michael Rappaport. You see how I did that? I, I, I made the a.k.a. Michael Rappaport because I'm better known as the Gringo Mandingo. Um, I'm in here with... The 2015, 2016 podcast co-host of the year. Yes. Name is G. Moody. Last name rhymes with duty. Um, Here we are, smack dab in the middle of the holiday season, coming to the end of a very tumultuous 2016, the year that was. Um, See, I'm Rapport Stereo Podcast, just to fill you in on a couple of little couple of uh, standard uh, <clears throat> standard things we do here is we do not fact check anything with pride and glory. We refuse to fact check. It's the only reputable non-fact checking podcast in the world. Say that with pride. Um, uh, what else, G? R- run down the rules and regulations because there's new listeners each week. Um. You said it, you pretty much said it, man. No fact checking. Yes. Straight from from the heart. Uh, New York, New York uh, trash talk at its zenith. Smash and, and mouth podcasting. That's what it is. Um, so we're gonna get my man, the official, unofficial, political correspondent in this episode, Mr. Eli Lake. We fuck with him hard body karate. He's a part of the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast Brain Trust. Been a member. We're going to get him in here to talk about... I, I wanted to, him to inform me on um, some of the things that have been going on uh, with U.S.-Israel-Palestinian relationships. So I'm going to ask him that. I don't know if you want to, if you have anything specific you want to ask him. He's been very good at in, uh, speaking about politics in, in layman's terms. Because there's a lot of uh, highfalutin fuckboys out there. <laughs> Everybody's so politically correct. Yeah. All the hipster fucks. They're all out there poking fingers, trying to trying to poke shame in the game. They all know everything. All these little crackers. <laughs> Up in there watching uh, Atlanta. Shout out to Donald Glover. Listening to Chance the Rapper. Shout out to Chance the Rapper, thinking they got a world view. You ain't, you ain't got world shit. Okay? You're a little mm-hmm. fuck boy. We're coming after you. Yeah. All right? Eli Lake is part of the Iron Rap Boy Stereo podcast. You think you, you think you're, you're, uh, you're, 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 you, you got your, your, your nose is clean. You want to try to get on Twitter, fuck with people, ruin people, try to abolish people. 
with your little cute talk. Your hands dirty too. Your dude. hands dirty too. The political correct fucks, the hipster fucks, they think they, they got their noses in the air. So we're going to Eli in here to break it down. Yeah. Uh, and, and we're going to get into this brand new episode of the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. We're coming up on the end of the year, which will mean the special episode that we're dropping at the end of the year is going to be the sickest podcast ever with the sick fucks of all time. All sick fucks. All sick fucks of the week. Again, if you've never listened to the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast, that is an award that is earned, not given. We're yep. going to have the sickest podcast ever. We're going to break down all of the sick fucks that we've ever talked about in the 200 plus podcast episodes of the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. We're dropping that before the year ends. And we'll just jump into this. I, I, I wanted to ask you a question. This was in the news last week, but 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 see, this is this is gonna this is gonna keep going. All right. Um, George Carl um, yes. made some comments about uh, a few players in the NBA. I think some of it was valid, and then some of it he really fucked up. He talked about Kenyon Martin, J.R. Smith, and Carmelo Anthony his days in Denver. And I didn't have a problem with him saying this and that. And I'm sure none of those players really have a problem with him saying this and that about, you know, holding the ball, any kind yeah. of criticism on the court. The thing that George Carl fucked up on, and, and, and I really, really think he really, he really fucked up. Is he's talking about some of these dudes not having a father around. Yeah. And, 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 and that's, not, that's, not, that's not cool. Yeah. Yeah. He, what is he, yeah. he what used that the P word. Stuff? In describing some of uh, uh, J.R. Smith's crew, which we've talked about with Phil Jackson, the P word being the posse word, which I just think that is these are these old dudes using a word that at one time they were hearing around them with their players. Me personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with that posse word because I just think it's a dated word. And I think at a certain time with Phil Jackson and uh, George Carl were coaching, this was the sort of slang word when... Their friends, their crew, their clique would get introduced. Yo, this is my posse, la, 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 when it was not a derogatory term. So we don't need to go on that. We talked about that. I probably don't see it the same way some people do, blah, 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 blah. But George Carl <clears throat> really fucked up when he's talking about dudes not having a father around because, number one, that's part of the beautiful struggle. You wouldn't get players that played as hard and as ferociously like Kenyon Martin, like J.R. Smith, like Carmel Anthony, if they, had, if they were spoon-fed dudes. Kenyon Martin came up rough. You wouldn't get Kenyon Martin. You wouldn't get these great athletes um, if they were from Park Avenue and, and 67th Street on the Upper East Side. These are, these are grown men. Yes. They, what, what, what does that matter whether they have, you're just a, you're just a, uh, a coach. Yeah, I a, know. A, this, this is a business, and and you're coaching them to win the basketball games. So what does their their personal lives have to do with you? Why are you making comments about whether this guy has a, a father or not? You 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 you're there to coach. You don't care about them. You know what I mean? Like obviously you don't. You know what I'm saying? So and everywhere this guy's been, it's been that. What do you that mean? Similar. That that similar uh, player coach, that the, they hate him. You know they don't have he does, he doesn't have good relations with the former players. I don't know why, but this happens a lot. Yeah, I mean I think I think uh, just to give context to it, George Carl is a former NBA coach, very respected coach uh, to, to 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 the non basketball listeners because we don't want to alienate anybody, except for the little fuck boys, little hipsters. You you you, you could go organize your vintage lunchbox, okay. You little fucks. Yeah, man. Go play with your comic books, you little fuck boy. Go watch girls and, uh, you know, play twiddle dick. But for the people who don't know George Carl, he's a former NBA coach, um, successful, um, not the most successful, but successful. I think, uh, I didn't read the books, so it's hard to comment. I think he was talking about it in terms of the unfulfilled talent that he had on that Denver Nuggets team. No excuse. No excuse. He, uh, 
He went below the belt, and I think uh, it, 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 it's racial overtones or undertones, and yeah. and and, I, and, I, and, I, and it's not good. It's not good for coaches in general. Um, it's not good for him. It's not fair to the guys. And it, it, I heard uh, Kenyon Martin, who I've always loved as a player w- when he was in yeah. the league, talk about it in a very fair but 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 passionate way. Um, and he messed up. You know, uh, oh, basically he's saying, oh, well, we didn't win here because these guys didn't have fathers. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why we didn't win. That's that's why he did. That's why they didn't win the team. Um, right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason why. Um, he also talked about, which I think is more interesting um, for right now, because I feel like we're a little late on this one on the on the George Carl shit. And also, I don't want to get too basketball centric on why that team didn't win or did win. Because I think that team was 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 a real sort of um, unfulfilled talent. They had all that talent on that team, but they could never get over the hump. But they did pretty good. That forget that. He's also talking about something that's never really been talked about uh, by somebody as 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 reputable as as himself: steroids, performance enhancing drugs in the NBA, mm. which has been, been been a discussion for a long time. Now, I met with um this this dude. Fuck, I can't remember his name, but he was the guy that was all in the Balco stuff. Damn, I can't remember his name. We don't fact check here at the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. Nope. And uh, he's the guy that was all tied into, you know, uh, Barry Bonds, and he had the company Balco. Had a very interesting life, this guy. Right. But he was breaking down sport by sport, which sports have the least testing. And, and he was, you know, he knows all this whole world. He's given dope to people. He went to jail for giving dope to people. <laughs> and he had his life ruined, made, and built on giving dope to people. So he's not just some kook. Right. He told me this is about... I don't know, eight years ago, nine years ago, that the NBA has the least than the worst steroid uh, growth hormones uh, uh, out of all the major sports. And, and I believe this to be true. Now, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, uh, I, I don't want to, you know, name names. I don't know anything about that. But I just, I just have a feeling that, you know, there's been obviously baseball has been crazy. You know, if anybody should be able to use steroids, football players should be able to do it just for recovery reasons. But I, I, I have a, I have a sneaky suspicion that some some major league basketball players have used steroids. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't know either. But there, there's never been a steroid scandal in basketball. Every other sport has had a steroid scandal. Uh, right. It's not just a coincidence. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I hear you. It got to be. Don't don't they test for that stuff? Bro? No, they have they have a very very easy easy to easy to debunk testing uh, for steroids in the NBA. That's what mm-hmm. George Carl was basically saying. Oh, damn! The, the human growth hormones, that good blood thinner, mm-hmm. all that fly shit. So, so he's making a claim that players in the league are using that. Yeah, he probably used it too. Right, but he's not a player. He's trying to sell a book. Not why would George Carl need to? Yo, you're not going to make millions of dollars off a book. George Carl could get a coaching job in Israel. I I don't uh, think George Carl saying these things. I think George Carl just said what he he said, and he, he's saying the things he said because he wants to say them. I don't think it's. I I think people misconstrue. George Carl's made millions and millions of dollars as a head coach. Mm-hmm. The book is never going to pay him as much as money as he made as a head coach. Trust me. Right. Trust right. me. <laughs> Even if it's a bestseller, he's never going to make as much money uh, as a basketball coach as, as as he could possibly make as an author. It's just never going to happen. I think right. he just, you know, kicking the shit that he wants to kick. Backpedaling for a second. The last I Am Rapport Stereo podcast, me and Gerald Moody were very adamant about Tom Arnold uh, doing what? Uh, running them tapes, man. We, we went on a whole up. tangent about running them tapes. Tom Arnold has claimed that he has tapes... And he's seen tapes of t- uh, President-elect D. Trump talking crazy, talking mm-hmm. reckless. Talking like he talks in private. Yes, yes. And, and it was a, a sort of a promo, sort of private, sort of gag reel from the show The Apprentice. And he's seen them, yada, yada, yada. So then we want a whole tangent about... Running them tapes. Yeah, running them tapes. And Twitter, we, we, you know, the Rapper Pack, who I want to give a shout out to, and I just want to say this, make sure I don't forget where I am. Yo, 
First of all, we love the Rapper Pack. I'm not going to no, even name names of the Rapper Pack because I feel like we've named names in the past and people have gotten offended. We know who supports the show. We know who has supported the show from the beginning. Yes. We appreciate all of you. I can't stand, it hurts my heart sincerely to hear about any pack-on-pack pack crime. Can't we all just get along? Stop all that. Yeah, man. Yo, there, there, there is no hierarchy and all that stuff. We're doing the podcast for love. The people that are supporting uh, the I Am Rap Porcerio podcast are doing it out of love. We know that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like to hear about dudes arguing, fighting, kicking yeah. dudes out of the rapper pack. The point is, no pack-on-pack pack crime. If you don't fuck with somebody that also messes with the Iron Rap Poor Stereo podcast, you guys just leave each other alone, man. We need to stay together. We got, a, we got enough haters. We got enough yeah. fuck boys out there that we need to deal with collectively. Word. Everybody doesn't have to get along in the rapper pack, but, but, but there, there should be no sort of dissension within the rapper pack because of that. It's not worth it. Right. Furthermore, I get a lot of people tweeting me, DMing me, <laughs> that are cursing at me, and then when I say, watch your mouth, Duke, or I actually <laughs> ask what that mouth do, then they go, I'm just teasing, I'm a big fan. Listen, listen, listen. I appreciate that you're a big fan. I get that. That's not a way to approach anybody. You don't, you don't call, hit my Twitter up, and start cursing at me. I, I think that people think that that's a sort of a sign of affection. You have to come with, with, with your hands down first and then start talking shit. You can't just say, like, yo, Mike Rapp, fuck you, asshole. <laughs> dude, that's not, uh, not going to work, okay? Because then, then the, hair, the, the hairs on the back of my, my neck uh, stand up, and then I either block you, I call you a little fuck boy, or I might even ask, what that mouth do? Getting back to Tom Arnold. So anyway, Tom Arnold, surprisingly... Saw the saw the, the 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 Twitter from the rapper pack. Saw from um, Jordan Winter, podcast uh, producer extraordinaire, and so on and so on, and responded as much as somebody could respond to somebody on Twitter to where he's at with them tapes and and the seriousness in his opinion of actually seeing those tapes, right? And having those tapes, and 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 and, and I. I have to say I have a different light on it now. And then he hit me up and we talked, we talked off air, offline. He explained to me a little bit. And, and I'll just say this. First of all, I've known Tom Arnold for a long time. Him, when he was with Roseanne, they always used to support me. When I first started doing stand-up comedy, they were always nice to me. When there was a lot of player haters. Right. <laughs> and um, I used to rock with him on the best damn sports show. So I was never attacking him personally. No. Just run them tapes, dude. I just wanted to know where them tapes at. But we spoke offline and, and, and you know, he explained to me the situation a little better. And, and you know, he also said that, you know, it's, the, 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 it's not the end. Basically sort of, you know, saying like, this is not going to be the end of these tapes and people, you know, coming out with stuff with, 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 against Trump. But I feel like it's too late. I feel like the guy's already, you know, won the presidency. You know, if the tapes right. were going to be effective, it would have been good to use them. You know, you said, Mr. Moody, that w w what yeah. is your opinion about that? If, if, if these tapes do exist and there's him saying the N-word, calling his son a retard and all kinds of other things, you said that his supporters would even love him even more? Yeah, yeah. I, I said those tapes wouldn't matter before uh, the even, you know, when, while the uh, campaign was going on, if they came out. None of that stuff matters. You know, it would be like they, they, they would like him even more because they feel like he's brash enough to say it. Right. You know, so and this is how he probably talks, you know, in private, whatever. So they know that it's nothing new. It's not like, oh, damn, how could he say that? They know they don't care. It'd be like. Like a mixtape coming out. Right. Like, like, a D, like DJ Clue shit. Like he put out some new shit. Yeah. Like a Brucey B tape. Yeah, this is nothing unbeknownst to them. It's not a surprise. It's not, it's not like, oh, wow, he's, well, look at that. Look, he, he said some ill shit already. Right. He's proven he, he, that. He said it and already and, and he got nominated. So I hear you. I think, you know, for me, I just think like it's so frustrating. It's like, 
if you have anything that could have stopped it, why didn't you put it out there? But 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 again, you know, he said it's a little bit more complicated. He said he got threats, you know, straight up threats, you know, and, and all that stuff. So it becomes a little bit more real, like it becomes like right. you know, you know, whatever. So so just just I just wanted to, you know, like and but, but and I'm not apologizing because we didn't diss Tom. We were just saying Run them tapes. And we were just asking <laughs> Where them tapes at, dude? Yeah. Um, so, so I just want, you know, so that I, I, it's an ongoing story. I don't think it's going to go away. I don't think it's going to end. I think the question of where them tapes at Duke is going to continue now because he keeps talking about it. And now that he said he has them, people are going, are, are going to want to know where the tapes at. So that's <laughs> that with, with, with Tom or maybe we get him on the Iron Rap Poor Stereo podcast. We, we could air it out. Cause I have questions. Um, yes. that being said, I want to hear some funk. I'll be right back. Yeah. This is the Iron Rap Port Stereo Podcast. As always, proudly sponsored by Casper Mattress. Casper is an award-winning sleep company at a shockingly low price. You could get a Casper mattress for just $950 for a king-size mattress. You could sleep on it, live on it, cuddle on it for 100 nights. If you don't like your Casper mattress and you're not fully satisfied, they will refund you everything for free after a 100-night sleep trial. Go to www.casper.com forward slash Rappaport. Save $50 on your next purchase at Casper Mattress. They have sheets. They have pillows. My dog, Wheezy, the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast news dog, is laying and looking at me right now on his Casper mattress. They have Casper dog mattresses. I sleep like a big old baby on my Casper mattress with my new wife, who I've actually been with for seven years. Go to www.casper.com forward slash I am Rapport. Save $50 towards your first purchase. Play.it is your new podcast network for award-winning news programming and number one sports brands to entertainment and business leaders. Welcome. We're going to make you laugh. We're going to make you think. Give you that news and information. Pop culture, reality TV. What's happening in business today. Relationships, dating. The biggest names in sports. Play.it is delivering storytelling at its best. You want to see something entertaining? Tune in. Hear what you've been missing at Play.it. All right, <clears throat> we're back. It's the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. Come live and direct. Um, so I insinuated this on Twitter, social media. Um, and I wanted to share it with, with, with the people that are, are closest to me that I don't know, which is the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast fans. Because <laughs> as you know, we do this for the honey, not the money. Mm. And, and we love doing this, hopefully as much as the fans love listening to it. Um, and I was actually going to, on the radio the other day, I was going to say something about this. But I'm, I'm going to say it here publicly acknowledging it first here. I got married. So there is now a Mrs. Rappaport. There is now a Gringa Mandinga. Mm. My woman who I've Rip. been with for about seven years. Um, we got married. Very, 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 very low key. Um... I'm not having no kids. It wasn't no any. It wasn't no any. You know, shotgun wedding. We've been talking about it. Um, we actually went to the court to get the paperwork, and we were going to do it in the first week of January. And but because of uh, you know, I'm working on this other thing and la la la. There was no time to do it. They said, "Yo, you know, the, we were talking to this funny lady there. It was like a movie. We were talking to this funny lady. She said, you know, there's a woman you could do it for in private with. You know, she might be able to do it for you before you know before January." Uh, it's like 8.30 in the morning at the courthouse. And I got to tell you something. When you're going into the courthouse and you're not there to pay child support, traffic court, traffic tickets, it's a whole other thing. Right. They could smell it on you. The bailiffs and, 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 and the deputies in there, they could tell when you're in there and you don't want to be there. Because I was greeted very nicely. And, 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 and the guy said to me, I was in there with, with the gringo mandinga, and the guy was like, oh, you guys, you guys in here to get married? And I was like, they could feel it. When you mm-hmm. go in there on some shit where you don't want to be there, they treat you differently. No matter who you are. It wasn't just because I am the Gringo Mandingo Michael Rapport. They, they fucking give me a hard time, too. But it was nice to be in a courthouse on my own accord. 
<laughs> but we, we 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 called this woman at eight thirty in the morning. We went to her house. She's she's a private. Um, what are they? I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm one of these people too. We married the couple in Vegas. I forgot what it's called. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. You married Jesus. Yes, we married Jesus and his girl. Shout out to Jesus. Um, hope you guys are doing well over the holidays, Jesus and, and Mrs. Jesus. Um, and we mm-hmm. went to this woman's house, and it was it was it was a light rain, and it was a very beautiful ceremony, and I'm very very happy, and and I wanted to just share that with the with the people. The it's, it's not really a great story, but it was it was mildly romantic, totally planned, and also unexpected to do the same day. Um, and I'm very happy about it. I wanted to share that, you know, and acknowledge that 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 is the case because I I put up some some tweets and shit like that about us still popping. And me and my lady, you know, we dated in the '90s, and then then we went our separate ways, and we rekindled off the flame. And 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 what's the, what's the name of the group that sang second time around? G second time. Oh shit. Oh, Shalimar. Yeah, so we're on that second time around shit. And, uh, you know, so <laughs> so the gringo man, Dingo, is, is now a married man with Mrs. and Mrs. No, Rappaport. So I wanted to let the I Am Rappaport Stereo podcast people know that <laughs> and share that with, 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 with y'all. Yeah, congrats, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moody. You know, we, we've talked a lot about marriage and relationships. And, you know, me and, me and Moody have been through the ringer with some of these things. Um, yeah. It, 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 it's it's an ongoing uh, struggle and right. an ongoing process, but I think I, I found uh, the, the the right person, and uh, you know it's my best friend, um, and 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 someone who, who I can trust completely, and is literally ride or die for real. Right, and that's important. That's, that's the most that's, important thing. That's major, major. That's the most important thing. You got to find, you know, you got to be with somebody you trust who's down for you. And, and relationships are work, but it shouldn't be a fucking, it shouldn't be like a goddamn, uh, it, sh- you know, it, it should be work, but it shouldn't be a bloodbath. You know, you, yeah. you, you're going to fight and you are, you're going to argue, but it shouldn't be like a, uh, uh, you know, like a world wrestling match, you know, uh, right. cage match. Right. Who, who can go uh, below the belt the lowest? Yeah, that, 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 that's too much work for a relationship. Um, yo, if you want to listen to the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast, you can listen to the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast 24-7 on TuneIn Radio. Along with the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast, you can listen to audiobooks, radio stations from all over the country, news stations from all over the country. The TuneIn app has it all for free. NFL, NBA, NHL, Major League Baseball, college football, college basketball, and more. No bullshit. I use it. I love it. You can listen to me on the ESPN when I'm on there talking greasy on ESPN radio. You can listen to your favorite jazz station. I got my favorite jazz station on TuneIn in San Francisco. WBGO or WBLS in New York City. Soul 106 in Chicago. And so on and so on. It is all on the TuneIn app. There's no more excuses, people, and you can listen to all I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast 24-7. The channel is called Pleasure and Pain. I love the TuneIn app. I love everything about the TuneIn app. Check it out now. Download the TuneIn app and hear what you've been missing. Mm. What else is up, Moody? Oh, man, another teacher. Oh, I know, I, I know t- where you're going. This one was a substitute teacher yes. in, in Louisiana. She was a imagine the substitute getting ill now. Yo, she was um having sex with three of the students. Jesus. One was 12. Jesus. That see that's not cool. That's not cool. That's still yeah, you he didn't got his working papers. So that's that's not good. That's not dope but at the, all. The but the other cats were, you know, a little older. So she was uh, exchanging uh text messages and all that. Three of them, man. Damn. Three different... This is a sick person. Yeah. They, yeah. I, I, I don't support that. Are you messing with 12-year-old boys? What's wrong with you? Yeah. The substitute teacher. Yeah, that shit will get you benched. The fuck is Word. you doing? And it'll get you yeah. locked up. Yo, George Michael passed away. Oh, I know, man. Very sad to hear that, man. He's like a soul singer, too, man. That guy was... Great, man. Blue-eyed soul, man. George Michael was the shit in the 80s, man. Hell yeah. No doubt. 2016 was a rough year, man. A lot of great people passed, man. A lot of great people. Prince, the great Fife Dog, David Bowie, Muhammad Ali. Fuck, man. 
Yeah. I mean, the the, the list is really, it, it goes on and on. And so many people have passed. It's a, whew, a, yeah, big, it's, a big it's year, man. A big year. Uh, a crazy, chaotic year. You hear uh, my man uh, Terry Bradshaw talking greasy about uh, the coach for the Steelers, Mike Tomlin. Oh, no, I didn't hear him. What, what, what was my man T. Biddy saying? He said he said he uh, he doesn't think he's an elite coach. He said he's more like a cheerleader. And I'm you know Mike Tomlin is one of the best coaches they had in in Steelers history. I agree. He, and the players won, love Mike Tomlin. He won Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? Two Super he got, Bowls. No, he went to one. I mean, he went to two and won one. <laughs> right, right. I'm saying he went, he was there at two yeah, he went Super to two, Bowls. Right, right. So I, I've learned that EPMD is uh, his favorite group of all time. Yeah, how so could I you not tell, like Mike Tomlin? So I want to tell Terry Bradshaw, on behalf of Mike Tomlin, get the Bozak, motherfucker. Shout out to Eric and Parrish. Leave my man alone. Yeah, he 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 always has the team competitive. Yeah, this year they had crazy about? injuries. Le'Veon Bell sat out the first four games because he was smoking that ooh wee. Um, and then they're they're always in the playoff. Yeah, they're, they're good. Shut up. Yeah. Did you see uh, um, the games yesterday? Yeah, man. Hell yeah. LeBron and them beat the Warriors again. It was a tough day for me, man. I sit there and watch the Knicks you lose to the Celtics. I made a bet with Bill Burr. If you remember, um, I made a bet with Bill Burr or during the finals. He bet on Cleveland. I bet on um, the Warriors. I have to take this fuck out to dinner. I haven't even took him out to dinner. Then he hits me up. He said, I want to do double or nothing with you, you fuck, for the Knicks versus Boston on Christmas. I said, dang. well, if I lost, well, what do I got to do? I don't want to spend the whole fucking day with you feeding you. He said, you take me to breakfast. You drop me off, and then you take me to dinner, you fuck. I said, no problem, asshole. The Knicks <laughs> lose. I got to spend the whole... I love Bill Burr. He's a good guy. I don't want to fucking spend the whole day with him. Right. So Take I lost him, uh, that. And then and then the Cavaliers beat the Golden State Warriors. Uh, and, and, you know, people people, people are like... I, I feel like the Golden State Warriors are, are, are not as good a team with Kevin Durant. I think there's just one too many good dudes on that team. Yeah, he's... Uh, told, I mean, it's... Yeah, man, this guy... You you got to win this year. Remember I said it was mad pressure on him? You have to win this year. Yeah. But that's not going to happen. LeBron and them are winning it again. Jesus. You, 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 you think that? I'm telling you that right now. You know my whole pedigree with this, B. <laughs> with predictions and actual coming true. <laughs> LeBron, man, you see how these dudes look, man? Who? The Cavs. Yeah, they look good, man. They, they came back. They locked when, when you lock when you get up on them jump shooters, man. The game change. Yeah, nah, they good and they got those ancillary players. They got that goon Tristan Thompson who I like. I'm really nervous yep. about him. He's hanging out with Khloe Kardashian. I've always liked Tristan Thompson. He's a, he's one of those those goon offensive rebounders. He, he doesn't want to score points. He just wants to get rebounds. Yeah, you need that. He's hanging around Khloe Kardashian. They were rocking fur coats for Christmas. Right. A couple of years ago, shit was sweet. Khloe Kardashian did a PETA ad. Now it ain't so sweet. You got custom-made furs for you and your man. Yo, don't drag this dude down. Damn. He's still messing with her? Yeah, man. Oh, they want to, you see what they, they want a monopoly on, on a uh, black cock, but they don't want to be out on the front lines for Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Wait, what they did need you to say? Understand, they need to understand you can't have the loaf without the black guy. Yeah. So black lives do matter. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, no, they don't give a shit, man. They just, they just want all the glitz and the glory of, of the whole thing. And this guy's like 24 years old. She bought him and his whole crew like Rolexes and all that fly shit. These guys yeah. are from oh, Canada. Pimp- oh, they pimping now. Now, now. now she's on the other side now. Oh, yeah. She's steady what? pimping. She's steady yeah. pimping. Absolutely steady pimping. No doubt. Yeah. Yo, I was in an um, a Uber, man. And you know, you was always talking about the taxi cab drivers and that funk that they have, right? It's, 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 now tr- it's Sometimes it's the body funk. Sometimes it's straight breath. And you can tell the it, difference. 
it's now transferring to Uber because those drivers are now driving Ubers. So since we, you know, you, we can see that you're not going to wash up, right? So why not, why not just tape, duct tape two bars of soap to your fucking underarms and shit, man? <laughs> Uber, Uber can't let these motherfuckers drive without having some type of mandatory hygiene shit, man. Yes, I agree. You, you, you have we, to have showered within 24 hours before getting in the car. Yo, yeah. I straight up give dudes mints, G. That's, that's real. Yo, you'll feel like a grown man. You don't have to be volatile. You don't have to be aggressive. You just tell a dude, yo, take this, man. Yeah. The, the, the first way to do it is you, you put a piece of gum in your mouth and you do it loud. They could hear you. And then you say you want a piece. <laughs> it's yeah. like reverse Uber. psychology. That's the gentle way to do it. And, and most of the time, they'll say yes. If they say nah, then you say, yo, you know what, Duke? Yo, take this shit. Yes, man. Uber can't afford to have their drivers smelling like shit, man. Yo, you, you, you'll feel, you'll feel uh, so free when you come to, when you come to terms with your, with your, your grown and sexy, where you offer your cab driver some mints, some Tic Tacs, or some straight-up cinnamon gum. Yo, those neo-Nazis, they're trying yeah. to get hyped out, out there in, uh, in, 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 in Montana. Whitefish, Montana, it, 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 some shit is going to pop off. Oh, what happened? They're, 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 they're out there saying they're continuing our barrage against the criminal Jews of Whitefish. Damn. And, and, and you know, they're, 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 they're just, you know... They're looking to get it popping out there, man. It, oh, it's man. just not good. Damn, yo. I don't know, man. These guys, yo, they feel empowered. This is what we're talking about. People say, oh, how can you blame uh, Trump? And, and, and now it's going to be put in his lap. Just go back to the nature of the campaign. What do you think would happen? Right. Right? This guy's like putting gasoline on the fire. So now people feel like, yo, oh, this is what it is now. This is why these things are happening. Right. And he is responsible for the atmosphere that he created yes. with the nature of the campaign. Yes. So you, you cannot disassociate him from the cause of this. You can't. You can't do that. People want right. to be like, oh, well, well what, what, you know, what does Trump have to do with this? He wasn't there for this. He wasn't there for that. This is right. the sentiment. This it's is the brazen. sentiment. It's brazen now. Yeah. Because... He, you know, he actually won on, on that type of uh, rhetoric. He won on that. So now it's brazen. Now they feel em empowered and emboldened. But, you know, there's a consequence. You could do all that shit. You could try that shit. But some motherfuckers ain't going to be with it. And you could get yourself killed or hurt. Yep. You know, so that's what's going to happen. Yeah, it's not good. It is not good. Yo, we're going to call up Eli Lake to get the unofficial, official political correspondent here to talk some politics, talk about some things that are going on with Israel. He's, he's written some very um, focused articles on Obama's stance with Israel. So I want him to explain it because I know nothing about it. And, and I encourage people to admit when they don't know anything about something. That's the only way you're going to educate your fucking dumb ass. Okay. The only dumb question is the one you don't ask. Everybody wants to act like they're such smarty pants and all that stuff. I encourage people to ask questions, to learn, and 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 the only dumb question is the one you don't ask. Okay? Soft ass I am Rapport stereo podcast t-shirts are available at districtlines.com forward slash I am Rapport. We're having a sale, folks. The promo yeah. code is butter because the t-shirts are butter soft for 10% off. Okay, go to districtlines.com forward slash I am Rappaport. The designs are sick. The t-shirts are sick. My, my, my wife said to me the other night while I was laying in bed, wow, that's a soft t-shirt. And I said, look at it. And you know what it was? It was a Stickman 2 t-shirt. Mm. It was butter soft. She, she was touching it, rubbing my back, caressing it. And she couldn't believe just how soft the Gringo Man Dingo's t-shirt was. And it was one of our own district lines t-shirts stickman 2 now a classic t-shirt i want to hear a little funk then we can call my man eli lake play.com
Got It is your new podcast network for award-winning news programming and number one sports brands to entertainment and business leaders. Welcome. We're going to make you laugh. We're going to make you think. Give you that news and information. Pop culture, reality TV. What's happening in business today. Relationships, dating. The biggest names in sports. Play.it is delivering storytelling at its best. You want to see something entertaining? Tune in. Hear what you've been missing at Play.it. Yo, 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 here we go. It's the Iron Rap Poor Stereo Podcast. Eli Lake, G Monetti. Yes. What's the deal, Eli Lake? What's going on? Thanks so much for having me back. Happy uh, New Year coming up. Yeah. Thank I you. I thank the Rapper Pack because I, I had a rough day on, on Twitter today. Well, mm. Explain it, Eli, because we, 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 we got your back, man, because this is what I think about. I, I, I've been checking out some of these, these clowns. They're trying to talk shit to you on on on, uh, on social media, and and I, I'm assuming most of these guys um, love Chance the Rapper. I like Chance the Rapper too. Shout out to Chance the Rapper. Um, but these are little fuckboy hipster fucks um, who think they are above and beyond um, everything. They're 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 told they're so hopped up on political correctness. They think that their I hands mean, are not dirty of anything, and they're trying to point fingers at anybody and everybody. They have their little, the little, the little shit stained podcast. They're about nothing. <laughs> they laugh at their own jokes, and, and I don't know what 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 started the the little the little thing on social media. But this is what I'll say this to you, Eli: like you're down with Rappaport, and the Iron Rappaport Stereo Podcast is down with you. Fuck these dudes. Okay, fuck the hipster fucks and fuck yeah. the political correct fuck boys and their skinny jeans, their coffee breath, and the newspapers under their stinky ass armpits. Yeah. Yes. Um, I love it. <laughs> I, I, I really also noticed that the, the, these, these crackers that I'm talking about, they, 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 they try to affect um, hip hop slang, but in a hipster way. Like, like I, I noticed that they like they try to snap, but they like try to do it like you know, like like. But it's it's all corny. Like the whole style is chump. So, do you <laughs> want to explain to us what happened? I mean, they're ironists, and they're ironists. The you know, you know what? I got irony. I got irony for you. Are you you're an actor, man. Of course, you got irony. <laughs> yeah, I don't play that irony I mean, shit. It's like here's the thing: they're very good at Twitter. I'll give them that, and. I have been in for like a few years now, one of the people they really go in on, and it's mainly political. But what right. happened was, and this is, I'm, I'm opening up here with the Rappaport podcast, but I have been a lyricist like most of my life. Since when mm. rap came out, I was rapping myself like in fourth grade. And I'm not saying that I'm, I'm not a professional rapper. I don't really do it anymore. I'm in my forties now, you know, but in the day, I, I freestyle, and it was a thing that happened. You know, like in D.C., people sort of knew about it, but it was like low-key. It was before Twitter. It was before, like, social media. But it was like, you know, something I did. And this got out to these dudes. Honestly, I don't even think they could ever step into a cipher. And I would love if they went in and wanted to go in with one with me in a second because I would tear them up. Oh, Eli spits that shit. I don't even really respect <laughs> this whole thing. I'm not even really sweating that. It's like, for them, it's like a Twitter thing, whatever. But here's the thing. They took out of context, like, one tweet that I did that was before all of this was going on with the police and everything, and before, it was like a completely different era in 2010. Mm-hmm. And I was playing around with the idea of, you know, we have fuck the police, so I want to do, like, respect the police. So it was this pro-police rap. And it's kind of embarrassing in 2016. And so they, like, went through my Twitter, which is thousands of tweets, to find, like, these three things and, like, put it out, and everybody's, like, going off on it. Damn. Yo, That's you know bullshit. what, Eli? Fuck that shit. Yeah. Listen. Fuck that shit. You, 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 you know what? It's like, they, they, these people, like, everybody they, else is trying to be creative. You know, in 2010, like one day, like an afternoon, I, I, I tweeted that mm. off. Who cares? 
Yo, you don't even have to explain it. First of all, the fact that these these th- these people think they're so smart and so cute and so in the know, and that you know how long it takes to go through someone's Twitter all the way back to 2010. You know what kind yeah. of a scoundrel bottom feeder you have to be to do that. And then that heard they were trying to pop shit like you don't know hip hop. What, what what's the name of that podcast that they the, the what are they called the the, the the El Chapos? Yeah, the Chapo Trap House. The, 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 their their thing is called the Chapo no, Trap the House. So they're trying loves to, them, which is why Rappaport is their mortal enemy. The hipster elite is writing about. They're like that is the hipster elite podcast of the minute. Mm. And they're trying to pop shit to you about rap music and all that. Yo, anybody out there that has any questions about the validity of the of of of, of the political correspondent Eli Lake and his hip hop pedigree, you come to me and G Moody. Last name rhymes with duty. That's right. We we deal with anything that has to do with hip hop, with anything to do with anybody that has anything to do with the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. So yeah, we, we got we, we'll back. deal with all the hip hop shit for you, Eli. I appreciate <laughs> we, it. We 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 got you, Eli. Because I, I I don't like these people. They they try to go out of their way. They're trying to like put you through the ringer. Like well, what is their end goal? They want to try to like. You, you, like it's political though. They they blame me for the Iraq War. I mean, right. It's political. They. It's a political thing with some of them that goes back, and then they got their Twitter friends and everything like that. Yo, that, 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 I, I, I'm sorry you're going through that. Hold your head, dude. I'm not worried because I have the rap pack. Yeah, the rap pack is hard body. And, and for me, the cha- what, what are we even talking about? It's the rap pack. Come on. Yeah, what are they yeah. called? The El Chapo trap? What are they? Yeah. And then, and then that's like the irony. They're the, 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 the El Chapo trap house. And then they sit there and they drink coffee. I mean, and they, they pot- do political stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, like they, one of the dudes, I'll be real. There's one guy in that crew who does like a fake kind of like DC insider type and it's hilarious. The other mm. two dudes who are on it are kind of like, they're like, you know, they're hanging on. You know what I'm saying? That one guy, though, and I'm forgetting his name. But he does a character called Carl Diggler, and it's funny as it's funny as it is legitimately funny. I mean, fuck Carl I'll Diggler. That. Fuck Carl Diggler. <laughs> yeah, I know. Fuck that dude. I know. Fuck all of them. I agree. Do you think they had watching parties? I'm, I'm, just, uh, I'm just calling. Like, I'm just saying that there's one thing. It's like there's one dude. Like it's got a little something, and it's that guy, and then the rest of it is trash. Yo, money's you know? whack. His whole style yeah. is whack. Carl yeah. Diggler's whack, and your whole crew yeah. is whack. All right, it, but, they don't have the they don't have the co-host for Thomas. No, no, they don't no. have the, the podcast co-host of the year. These are no; these people are no match. No, they're no match. No, no, they're they're yeah. no match. And do you yeah. think we, this is my final question about this whole clique? Do you think they would get together for viewing parties of the TV show Girls when it was on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I have, I, I have, like, honestly, I have no idea. But if you had to bet. Do you think they would watch girls to together? On that. It's funny though. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Eli, let's rap. get to the politics here, man. All right. What happened with in the last couple of weeks with um, the Obama administration and Israel? And really explain it in layman's terms, because so, so some people, you know, are still saying Obama is not for Israel. I can't argue right or wrong, wrong or right, up or down about it, because I I honestly, it's hard for me to follow all the terms and terminology and certainly the history of it all. So in layman's terms, where is the Obama administration with Israel and where where is it at right now? And what's got some people pissed off about where he stands with Israel, if I'm correct? Well, the relationship is blown up right now, but it's happening during what we call the transition. So when Trump comes in, the current prime minister, Netanyahu, has a very close relationship with Trump. But the relationship right now, not just between Obama and, uh, and Netanyahu, but really like between the two countries after this, what happened at the UN on Friday, is like an unprecedented disaster. And I'm, I'm a pro-Israel guy. And I have to say that in some ways, and I'm writing about it, so I'm going to be a little bit, in some ways, Obama has been saying this now for eight years, that he uh, believes the settlements are destroying the chances of a two-state solution, and this is what he's trying to do about it, and that's, that's, what, that's how he would say it. But the way that I see what he just did was he, he broke a longstanding precedent that has been in place since Reagan, where the U.S. has protected Israel against resolutions that talk about the status of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem has always been the 
you know, the city of the Jews it's been since King David, but also in terms of Israel, it's the capital. And the idea that the remnants of the Second Temple, known as the, 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 the Wailing Wall, would somehow be considered occupied territory, which is what this resolution says, is politically and diplomatically for Israel a disaster. And uh, at least in Washington, a lot of uh, Democrats who are very supportive of Israel are very concerned right now about what Obama just did. And it does kind of open that question. It's complicated to say, is he pro-Israel or is anti-Israel? And I think that's not right, the right word for it. But I think that Obama has basically sort of given Israel what he would call tough love and aligned himself with the left in Israel, which has not been able to win an election for nearly 20 years. And he's, he's definitely been in a kind of political war with the elected leader of Israel, which I think is, a, is you know, is, is one of the reasons why we are where we are. And, 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 and where are we, where we are? Like, what's the future of, of, of Israel and, 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 and their dealings? Like, where are things going to go? I mean, I know you, 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 you don't have a, a crystal ball. Only G Monetti has a crystal ball that actually works. Yeah, seriously. But, but yeah. Like where where Dr. where Wong, is where is Israel going in terms of like you know the safety and and the unification of it? I think in a lot of ways there's a good story to tell about Israel, which is that it's a huge you know part of the tech industry in the world. Um, it's got some of the best hospitals and medicine, and I believe that in terms of the U.S. Israel relationship, it should graduate and the U.S. should stop subsidizing its military the way it does, and it should be treated like as an ally, you know, perhaps with like a formal defense treaty. Um, I think that right now the Middle East is a mess. Look at Syria. Um, look at the rise of Yemen. I mean, we're seeing that in, Somalia, in that region there's like four active wars right now, if you count Libya. And, you know, the Egyptian government. So the whole region is really in a lot of trouble. And the one sort of place where it's, it's, it's more stable is going to be Israel. And I think that changes things a lot for them. So in some ways, maybe this U.N. resolution won't matter. But I think we're in the mo- a moment of extraordinary like tumult in the whole world. I mean, also we don't know what's going to happen with Trump. We're in for a ride. I mean, this could go a lot of different ways. If you know what I mean? Like, like w- I mean, w- what can happen with Trump? What what is going to happen with Trump? And 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 who are who are the three people in his cabinet as of now that are most concerning to you? Just your personal opinion. Like these are the three. Well, I would, can I say I would flip it because I would say that his bringing in James Mattis to be the defense secretary, which is a really important job to me is, is one reason why I'm, I'm less concerned right. than I was like on election night when we last spoke. Uh, I think he's a very steady hand there. Um, I think it's, the way to look at it is not in terms of the actual cabinet. The big question is what is he going to do about this multi-billion dollar corporation that his sons are going to be running when he's the president? We've never had anything like that before. It's, it, it's unconstitutional, at least I'm not a lawyer, but it looks like it. Mm. And he still has to f- figure that out, and we have, we're less than a month away. So right mm. there, I would say, is the first thing. And then the second thing is, you know, look at how he makes good on his promise to, to build the wall, to shut the borders. I mean, is he going to really start deporting, you know, thousands or hundreds of thousands of people? I don't think he will, but that is something he talked <laughs> about in the campaign. So we'll <clears> right. see what he does with that. You know, I think you're going to see far less regulations. You're going to probably see at least a lot of Obamacare, if not all of it repealed. Mm. There's going to be a lot of changes. And 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 if if Obamacare is 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 repealed, what happens to people? Like like what what are the what are the pros and cons of Obamacare? Like, is are are some people like fuck you? You're not taking my Obamacare away. Well, I mean, I don't. I, this is not my. I'm not. I don't not really. I don't really write about it. But I could just say on the basic level that if oh, Trump has talked about elements of Obamacare, like um, guaranteeing that, you know, you can't be screened out for a pre-existing condition um, that he says he'd like to keep. And that suggests to me more flexibility on it. Mm. But the guy that he made the head of uh, health and human services is a pretty conservative person who's written a lot about kind of reforming and repealing Obamacare. So in terms of how it will affect like an, like, each person, I mean, we'll have to really sort of see, we've got to see how it plays out. I think it would be politically unpopular for people who are now on Obamacare if it was taken away. Oh. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I just feel like once you're on it, it's oh. only taken it away. They don't blame that guy for doing it. Right. I got you. I got you. Uh, Moody, you got any political questions you, you, you have for uh, the, the uh, official, unofficial uh, podcast uh, political correspondent, Mr. Eli Lake? 
No, I just like listening to Eli Lake. Very informative. So I have very minimal questions. He does the job perfect. And this is just another little shot. It's somebody said uh, on on Twitter, "Oh, we smoked a bowl together." La la la. So what y'all smoked a bowl together? Like so this is another one of these little scoundrels that try to shit on my man Eli. Why are you going on yeah. Twitter? Talking about you guys smoked a little weed together. Maybe my man Eli was trying to freak off. You, 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 yeah. you, you tattletailing on Twitter. Dry snitching yeah. on Twitter. Eli, what about this dude, Steve Banning? How, how, how dangerous is he? Steve Bannon ran a website that traffics in the kind of shit that I don't really, I don't think is cool. I don't think it's good. And it appealed to people who definitely had extreme views on race and other things that were kind of considered in the category of the deplorables. Mm. I knew Andrew Breitbart, who was the founder of that site, and I think a lot of what Andrew Breitbart did was fine. It was just sort of really aggressive conservative journalism, and that's sort of an element of it. But Bannon is kind of like somebody who has really been in the Alex Jones side of the news spectrum, which is like appealing to people who talk about conspiracy theories and things like that. That said, I just point out that you had a guy, and Bannon was a big part of this, of running against the globalists running against the bankers, running against these people, and that's scary. And we all know why, as uh, all of us in this conversation understand why that kind of thing is really scary, especially for, you know, traditional sort of Jewish stereotype. But on the other hand, I have to say, who do they bring into the government? Goldman Sachs uh, and, like, a, a couple of those guys who mm. come in and the Treasury with Steve Newton. And then, you know, what's the first thing they do? They try to do everything they can to stop this thing at the U.N., which is so bad for Israel. It's going to say this thing about Jerusalem. And I understand that Bannon was the key guy who was arranging the calls between CC and Trump. Um, so on that score, you know, we don't know. We know that Bannon himself comes from Goldman Sachs. He himself was a kind of globalist elite. He was in Hollywood. He has a piece of Seinfeld. He's a guy who's kind of been in all these different worlds. And he sort of found political success for this formula that's happening to this kind of populism right now. And the guy who he kind of went to the, you know, Trump is the that he was like, he's like, of course he's going to be in the White House. You know? Right. He got on the presidency. Right. All right, Eli. Listen, this is good stuff. I don't want to ever overwhelm myself or my brain or the listeners' brains. Thank you so much. And thank you to the rap attack. That was great. <laughs> Listen, we got you, man. You, you, you're part of the show. You're part of the podcast. Don't sweat these guys. They're jealous. They're player haters. They want to be doing what you do. Okay. Yep. I feel that way on some of them. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, they, they do. I was there. You, you I was work there. at Bloomberg. They want that. So they could sit there and shit no, on okay, it and be like, oh, there, you're like, selling I out. To, I know what it's like when you gotta when you gotta freelance three articles in a week and like, you know, you gotta you don't know what you were. I know what that I know what that's like. Yo, don't don't sweat these dudes, man. They're, they're player haters, they're jealous, they want to be you, Eli Lake. They want to be you. So let the hipster leap. Let them iron their skinny jeans and, and, and go watch Luke Cage and, 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 and twiddle their fucking thumbs and, and roll their hand-rolled cigarettes. Don't pay them no mind, man. All right. All right, Eli, we got you. you. I appreciate the insight. We'll have you back on soon. Have a happy, safe holiday, and we'll talk to you soon, my man. Thanks, man. Peace. All right, that was Eli Lake. Yep. We had to hold Eli down. I don't like these guys trying to go at our guy. I don't like anybody trying to go at a guy and trying to defame them publicly on Twitter, pop shit, tattletale on Twitter, and all that. I don't like mm -hmm. it. I don't like it at all, especially by the little hipsters. It's not dope. It's not fresh. All right? You don't know nothing about nothing. All right? Go Everybody. read your little Huffington Post and your little Advocate magazine and all your little Atlantic shit. That don't mean nothing. It means nothing. Everybody's hands are dirty. Everybody's hands are dirty. I could read a magazine, but you can't read your face. <laughs> okay? I can educate my mind. You can't educate your face, you little fuck you. Um, <laughs> 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 Gee, I wanted to ask you if you knew this guy. There's a tenant in, Bro in the Bronx who sued their landlord. Right. After being without gas for five months in a poorly ma maintained building, are, 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 you you wouldn't happen to be this. Uh... <laughs> that ain't me, B. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I know you're a landlord up in the Boogie Down Bronx. They didn't name the guy's name. I was like, I hope this isn't the 2015 podcast code to the year, my man G. Moody. No, no. Definitely not me. You've had some wacky tenants over the years uh, uh, up there, right? 
Oh man, I had I had some of the worst New York City has has to offer. Well, what was the one? There was one lady who like t- tell the fans about some of the people that were there. There was one girl you told me she she left something so offensive, like the dirt, and like didn't she pee on the carpet or pee? Like, yeah. What was it? Break it down I, I, for this, the people. This this tent this tenant I had 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 an affinity for urine. The female uh, it, after she left. The I inspected the, the the room, and the carpet in the middle was soaked with urine. So she was walking through her own urine in the room. Jesus! And she would use the uh, bathroom and wouldn't pee in the toilet. She would urinate on the wall. Jesus! You've had fights. You've had tenants try to fight you. You have had tenants fighting each other. Yeah. It's sort of like a jail sort of situation. Yes, yes. It was it was uh, uh, very depressing. I'm no longer in in that uh, in that field of 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 tenants. Right. I hear you. I hear you. I'm good now. That was terrible. Okay. Okay. All right. So I understand. So I understand. Wait. I understand the landlord's viewpoint. Sometimes you deal with you're dealing not with. Uh, 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 really sane people sometimes. They attack you. Uh, it's bad. You, you've had uh, uh, tenants, uh, women a lot of times, attack you, correctly? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Physically want to fight you because, because you're going to collect rent. Yes, and yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm bothersome about collecting the rent. So Well, as you uh, should po- be. As you right, should right. be. So a landlord's point of view should be taken into uh, consideration. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that this story wasn't about my man because I, I was no. like, I hope this did not talk about my man. Nah, nah. I don't roll like that. Okay. Um, you got anything else for me, uh, Mr. Moody? Um, yeah. Um, you know, there's such thing as a professional cuddler. Have you ever heard of that? Uh, no. It's where you know you call a woman if you're lonely, and uh, you just want to cuddle. Mm. She provides a service where you could she come to your crib or you go to her crib. And she just cuddles with you. Her name is Lisa Van Ard- Ardsdale. She's 27. Mm. And, and it's her business. And uh, she uh, had a relationship with Tay Diggs. Get out of here. Yeah, she cuddled with Tay Diggs. You know, Tay Diggs hit it. She caught feelings. And she, she said she broke it off when she found out that Tay Diggs had a girl. So now he she's going public her. about this? Yeah, he called her for some cuddle, but of course he got naked. And he hit it, and then she caught feelings. That's what happened. Man, oh man, oh man. Have you ever she used built- or paid for a, 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 a cuddler? Oh, I know this is my first time hearing this, but I know I wouldn't just be cuddling. Mm. That's mm. what happened with Tay Diggs. Mm. Yes, sir. See? You... Do, do, you think she goes to the project? I'm um, sorry? You think she'd take requests from the projects? Like, would she go to the projects? No, I know a lot of motherfuckers that want to cut them. Yeah. <laughs> no, she, she'd go to Williamsburg with that shit. Yeah. She, she, yeah, she, she she'd, go with the guys, she'd go with the guys that are trying to go after my man Eli. Yeah, she wouldn't come with a go to with Kimbo and Debo, Debo and them. N- Debo slicing them. Yeah, maybe Debo want to cuddle. Yeah, maybe Saquon wants to cuddle. Or Hakeem. Yeah, or, or my man Saquon. Uh, he might have to take a shit during the cuddle. Word. He got a shit yeah. bag. Maybe he he wants to cuddle. You don't want to cuddle with Say, right? Yeah, my man just came home. Maybe he want to cuddle. He just came home. He need to cuddle. What are your prices for that? Yeah, w- w- if, if somebody did 11 years in the can and they say, you know what? I haven't been touched by a woman and I just want to cuddle. Word. For a nonviolent crime. He should be able to cuddle and have the option to get a little extra. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, anything else, Mr. Monetti? Yes. Um, this, this guy, Troy Av, the rapper... Uh, on Christmas Day, yeah, he got he get, he gets shot visiting his fam in BK, mm. um, and, I, and this guy's been in a lot of sh- sh- like a shooting at Irving Plaza where we were. Uh, I don't know how I could 
rap on stage knowing I could get my brains blown out, you know, at any second. You know Jesus. what I'm saying? Like, Did like, he have a shooting at Irving Plaza? Yeah. Man. So I'm like, I couldn't be uh, rapping like that. I have to have some type of shit made for me. Like, I'd be on stage with a Pope mobile and shit, man. Yeah, man. I, I, just, I, like, I like his rapper. I like his music. Yeah. I like his rapper too, man. Man, I, I, just, I, wish that, I wish that guy all the luck, man. Dang. All right, Moody. That's the end of the Iron Rap Poor Stereo Podcast. We'll be back soon. And, 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 and in the next couple episodes, I told you we're having the sickest episode of all time with all the sick fucks of the week. My name is the Gringo Mandingo. Uh, Michael Rapport. Some people call me Bird. Some people call me White Mike. Some people call me White Folks. Um, his name is G Moody. Gerald yeah. Moody. Gerald Moody with no middle name. That's right. No middle name for Gerald Moody. Uh, some people uh, uh, know him as G Monetti. Uh, some of his nephews and nieces still call him Fun Loving. See, I'm Rapport right. Stereo Pockets. We're going to leave out here on some funk. With my man Miles Davis, Jordan Winter. Shout out to the entire Rapper Pack. We appreciate all you, all the listeners. We appreciate you. Rate, review, give us all the love on iTunes. Give us all the hate on iTunes. We're sending t-shirts for the most passionate, heartfelt, imaginative, and creative reviews on iTunes. We're going to continue to conquer iTunes. It's the Iron Rap Stereo Podcast. Listen to these moody beats, this moody funk right now. We're done. We're done.